really two divisions of Northwood. There's long-term care um, for people that would be living in the long-term care facility, like the building at North and Gottage Inn or out on Hammonds Plains Road. And there's home care. Um, in home care, you drive to different clients' home in the, homes in the day. So you may look after six clients in a day, and you might go into Mrs. Smith's house and do some meal preparation and help her get ready for the day and then go to someone else's house sure. and um, give personal care, give a bath. Hello, how are you? Good, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name's Trevor. Brown. People. Hello. My son. <laughs> how are you? Very well, thank you. The baby. Beautiful. Oh. So Northwood Home Care is one-on-one um, -on -one with your client. You have someone that, that needs care in their home, and, and you would go, and then you would go on to your next client. So there's a lot of um, autonomy there. There's a lot of individuality where you can um, you work for the company, but you're setting up um, your meet, well, the meetings are scheduled for you with your clients. You go into the home and provide care and then move on to your next client. In the long-term care setting, you would have approximately 35 residents on a unit, um, and you would be part of a team of about six personal care workers. And uh, long term, long term care, yeah. Um, so that would be in the building, and um, with that, you would be a part of the team that would work to do um, the personal care for those residents that day. So that would be sometimes attending, um, helping them get to social events. Sometimes um, doing a lot of showering, of um, you know, toileting, a, a number of different things that are required in that um, in that capacity of caregiving. To does it, anyone have? Um, I know our, our friend has a nursing background. Anyone else have a nursing background? Nope. Yes, I had a, a, a girlfriend that was a nurse. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did. She was a nurse. So that's my nursing background. Yeah. So there are a couple of different ways to um, enter the field as a personal care worker. You could have a nursing background and be working on um, certification and licensing as a registered nurse or licensed practical nurse here in Nova Scotia. Um, and we could hire you conditionally. Um, because of your background and your knowledge, you could go right in and begin working as a personal care worker. And it would be conditional on either completing um, what's called the continuing care assistant course within a period, a time frame of two years, or completing your nursing degree and, and moving on um, into a, a nursing position, whatever comes first with that. Um, the other option is something called the continuing care assistant course which is offered at a couple of local schools. Nova Scotia Community College offers it, and uh, the Center for Health Studies on Barrington Street um, offers that course as well. It is about a nine-month course, and uh, you would come through with a CCA certificate, which is issued by the Nova, Nova Scotia Department of Health and Wellness, and that would allow you to work either in home support or long-term care. Um, the positions would be pretty much full-time, uh, depending on your availability. So you could go into definitely a full-time position in home care, uh, certainly significant hours in long-term care. And I'll just give you an idea of compensation. Um, home support workers would start out at a probationary rate of $17.35 hourly, um, and then you go to $17.95 after probation's up. Um, they're both unionized positions. In long-term care, um, someone that's graduated as a CCA or starts work as a PCW uh, would make 16.38 hourly. Um, and there are, because it's unionized, there are shift differentials if you work evenings or weekends and things as well. So um, there would be extra compensation on top of that. It is one of the most um, rewarding in terms of care for residents and um, really becoming part of, of their um, vitality and well-being. You help a resident be as independent as possible. Um, it's also a lot of job security. So if you're someone that has a good work ethic, if you're someone that um, is cut out for the work, it's not cut out for everyone. Not everyone can go in and give another human being a bath and do that with compassion. But those that can, it's an incredible career. Um, and you can certainly 
move between home care and long-term care, and um, you'll never be unemployed as a CCA, is what I tell um, people that complete that. So that's just a very kind of high-level brief overview, but um, does anyone have any questions regarding that? There's one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of the monkey. How long is the training? It's approximately nine months. So um, they have a course at Center for Health Studies beginning in October of this year. Um, we may, I was just talking to um, Angela Reed Jury, who's another one of our recruiters, and discussions are still there on um, some financial help for people to go into the course. So tuition varies from school to school. Um, but what we've done over this past year is offer a $2,000 bursary towards tuition. So um, taking $2,000 off your tuition is, is helpful. Um, it's still, you know, often for many people would require a student loan or some of those sacrifices to get the education. Um, but once you complete it, uh, your guaranteed employment. So it's approximately nine months. Um, there are some clinical placements. You would get work experience um, going out into home care and long-term care. And um, there's also a, a provincial exam that you write at the end of that course. How much does the course cost? At Center for Health Studies, it's about it's about 9500 I believe, like a 9500 for the year. NSCC, because it's provincially funded, if you can get into their September course, I think it's a, a little bit less um, because it's not a private institution. So last I checked with them, they were somewhere around $7,000 for the course. Um, so, you know, there are some, um, some costs for it, but the, uh, the employment on the other side is... Uh, basically guaranteed as long as you have a, a solid work ethic and good references. So you're just allowed to work in Nova Scotia or anywhere? The CCA program provincially is one of the strongest in Canada. Our province um, requires the CCA designation for most, um, you know, for most care workers. Uh, in terms of going to another province, they would have their own system of conditional hires. But our program academically is more complete than the majority of courses that are offered across the country. So I would be surprised if you had difficulty, um, you know, that, that your course wasn't recognized in another province. It just varies from province to province. But we've had a number of people, um, not that we want people to leave us and leave Nova Scotia, but we have had people go to Ontario and work as a personal care worker, personal support worker. Um, who had obtained that CCA designation. It would always be difficult for us to try to predict what regulatory right. bodies would say in the other provinces. But we're always supposed to be within the same jurisdiction in regard to the, the course load. But sometimes the other provinces make it a little bit difficult for political reasons. Or they make it a little bit easier because they have more of a need. Mm -hmm. And what you'll find is if, if they need people, they will find a way to work around it. If they're not looking to hire people provincially, they'll make it the courses difficult and the regulatory bodies difficult. So it's difficult for us right. to predict politically what could happen 9, 12, 18 months out in regard to a course you took in Nova Scotia. But the course is, is predicated on the basis that all of the provinces have the same desire to make it equal and fair. But it doesn't always end up being that way. That, uh... It's it's a really comprehensive, complete course. So um, there are some courses in Victoria or um, in um, the Ontario area, um, Metro Toronto, that would offer a PSW course. It's a personal support worker, and it's three or four months. Whereas this is a nine month um, What's the difference intensive. It, essentially, it's the same job functions. It's just different standards for education. Um, so Nova Scotia's standard is really high. We put people from other provinces through the hoops to uh, to complete it for the most part. Um, sure. Yes, sir. In the federal government of Canada, it's my understanding that if I have a license three in, in Nova Scotia, maybe it's not a license three in Alberta, but there is a way to uh, uh -huh. a, just very simply learn their little bureaucratic little things and, and learn it and, and continue on with your yes. license. You know, there's no problem in Canada renewing a license. It's just a question of adjusting to the needs right. and wants of the problem. For the most part, that's, yeah. that's the case. I mean, you know, particularly in healthcare. I mean, if you're a nurse, 
they cannot tell you somewhere else you're not a nurse, right. you know, I mean, they can tell you you should be a nurse, but you need to know this and this about us. Yes. Yeah. So Canada is beautiful. Yes. Do you have any position um, which doesn't need training? That doesn't require training? Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, dietary aids um, would be those that would, and it does require some food safety, but they're often willing to put you through that depending on, on the interview. I have food safety course. Oh, excellent. Done. And um, first aid course done. And also I have two years experience with home care. Okay. Without no, that's wonderful experience because um, a lot of people start with having nothing, and so um, what we can do is I'll, I'll get your resume and uh, and send it on to the manager of food exactly. services. The woman uh, whom I care lives in the North Wood in, in the Bedford now. Okay, yes. okay, wonderful. But when she was living in her uh, own home, I was two years old. So you're looking after somebody who's in our, our facility in Bedford now? No, yeah. Okay, so she's looking after somebody who's out at the Hammond's Plains. Okay, site. okay. So you're going to have to wait through. It's going to be $5,000 for you. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm just, I'm but there are opportunities there in, um, in dietary, environmental. Um, you know, there are, um, essentially, it's environmental varies. Like, you could be one day setting up furniture for a, a meeting in a particular area, clearing, um, you know, things away, doing cleaning in, in yeah. residence rooms and a number of different things. And those don't require um, a, a specific course to can go ask, in. Can I ask you a question? Now that you've been in our facility and have seen it operate, what do you think of us? Your question, please, again. Okay, uh, I'm just wondering how, as an organization and okay. the facility and the way we look after our residents, mm -hmm. do you have a, a good opinion or a poor opinion? You mean about organization, how to organize uh, people who live in the home care? No, from, from what you see, the way we're, we're running that facility. Oh, it was like home. It was like home. So she lives in a blue way. Blue, blue way, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I was wondering how many people live here, and she said maybe, I don't remember exactly, maybe 12 or 18, she said? No, it'd be less than that. What we did less? is we, 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 built, it, we built it as homes. I it's like part. home, it looks like home. It's um, yeah. a lot of flowers. I saw the flower garden was. Yeah. Well, I was part of the, the team that, that assembled it, mm -hmm. so that instead of a long, big corridors, mm -hmm. everybody would actually live in their own home, in their own bedroom. Yes. And they have a living room and they have a dining room. Before she lives with uh, her neighbor, there's yep. two, two yeah. women, and now she lives by herself in a different room, and she likes it. And for me, I was wondering, because it was, looks like, I mean, front front of uh, building was looks like Disneyland or something. That's today. why I picked those colors. <laughs> yeah. I did that. And I'll tell you the story. Yeah. I'll tell you the story for that. Mm -hmm. um, I was part of the team. I have a son mm -hmm. who was never able to go in to a long-term care facility because mm -hmm. he was afraid. Mm -hmm. But he would always ask me, I don't know if I've, I've never shared this story with anyone, but he would always ask me where she is, what window. He wanted to be able to see what window she was in. Mm -hmm. And I could, I was, you know, seven across, two up, four down. It was complicated. So when we were designing this new one, I said, I want to make it like Disney so that everybody would actually have their own color. This is what I was thinking about. It's, it's exactly, I, was, I just came from Disney, I just saw the, the beautiful things they did, That's and we we're going to create this Disneyland setting, yeah. and it would actually appear as if they're in their own homes, with their own colors, and you could actually be in the parking lot, and you could look up and you could figure out very quickly. Can I move that? But I want <laughs> to quite, uh, not to, too many levels. Maybe ah, more, that's maybe. another story. Yeah. <laughs> that is a complicated story. Uh, uh, we'll talk after. Okay. I don't want to ruin this meeting. <laughs> this is what I was think. My first, what I was think about this building. Yes. Disneyland, and I will be build one more level. I understand. We'll yeah. talk after. <laughs> okay. There's lots of stories I could share with you. But anyway, you had a good impression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I just wanted some of the other individuals. I was on the Mother's Day last time because uh, the woman who lives there, Brenda, her name is Brenda, she's also, always called me like she's Canadian mom for me because I, 
my English was very low when I meet her. And when I start to work with her, she just show me what she wants to do, like, like this, this, you this. know, yeah. And I'm very thankful for her because uh, for her patient, because it's very hard for adult people. Mm. She's a diabetes woman. Um, she didn't know her at that time, and I'm very thankful for her. And my last visit, I was uh, had a breakfast with her, and the personnel who was working in the kitchen was very friendly and like home. That's great. Mm. This is what Trevor's looking for. Yes. What Trevor is is saying to you mm -hmm. is this is what's important, and Rose can in, uh, attribute to that. We've been trying to create this home-like atmosphere. Like right now, we're in the papers this week because we're we're introducing a petting zoo. Mm -hmm. Coming in, I don't know if you've seen the papers. Well, we bring animals in. We bring cats and dogs and, and birds. And we've had birds flying around and getting in. in yes. But we try different things so that these individuals actually believe that they're getting the same care as if they were in, home, in their own homes. And we try to get the, um, if I could say, the residents treated as if they're family. That's, that's what we're trying to achieve. So we're looking for people who have that, have it in their hearts, mm -hmm. to create that warmth. Like Brenda said, oh Maria, I'm still waiting when you will work here. Yeah. And I said... Well, we're here, we're here to make that happen. Okay, thank you. How many hours the people uh, working in the day? Eight, oh, 12 hours? So there's a variety. There's eight and 12 hour shifts, depending on what you do. Eight um, until 12? No, 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 sorry. There's both eight hour shifts and, and 12 hours. Um, so if you were working an evening, you would work 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. If you were working a day, typically they're the 12 hour days, so it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And a night would be 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. It's work with team. How many That's people is uh, in the team? On the team. So yeah. you would have about five other, um, depending on staffing levels that day, you'd have about five other how personal care but, workers. But how many seniors on the floor? How many residents is she looking yeah, at? 35. Yeah. Um, 30, but, 35. Yeah, so about seven people per resident, although it doesn't really work like that, right? You have um, a team working together and you just everyone shares responsibility and, and go from there. Now in home support, of course, you're always one-on-one. -on -one. And the big need right now is with, um, with home support workers. So if anyone was interested in becoming a home support worker, um, you, would, you would go into your client's home. And what we have right now is a great big uh, wait list with Department of Health and Wellness where there are more people waiting for care than there are people to provide it. So it's a really um, great um, opportunity to go right into something and begin working full time. That would be our fastest track right now is if you were able to drive to see various patients and we would coordinate a, um, a you know similar to what you're doing mm -hmm. where you'd be going into various homes meeting various people just like brenda that you're that you're meeting and you would identify and connect to them and they would help you they would guide you they would say where to put this and don't put that there and hopefully it'll it'll be rewarding and then then you start to move up the ladder and as you get more of your course loads in, if you want to do more of the uh, in-facility work. Uh, but there's the independent role, that, that, which is exactly what you're doing now. So that's our biggest immediate need, as, as, as I would understand from Trevor. Yeah. And you can do that while you're studying. You can do that while you're, you're, you're doing your English. And people like Brenda will help you with your English even more. I, need, I yeah. for me, I need to improve <laughs> my English. No, no, don't, don't, you know, don't, don't let yourself be held back. You know, this speak to your problem because I'm two years staying home just with my kids, and uh, this is my English. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I it's English my third language, I need <laughs> to improve. Yeah, but you, you also could be holding yourself back thinking that this is an, an impediment when it may not be. Like you may be your own person that's blocking you from moving into the, let us let us help you, let us uh, guide you and coordinate whether you're ready or whether it's three months from now we'll review it again or six months from now. Yeah, I have odd question. Another, 
Are they seniors uh, still in this uh, building? What is happening outside? Them go, uh, from example, from library, from... Uh, to the not, park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The some yeah. air. Yes. Right, so recreation um, therapy does some events. So there are things like there's bowling and um, you know a number of different things. Often those will be done on site. It depends on the resident's mobility, like whether or not they're able to, to get up. Some people can't get out a whole lot and go do events, but there are regular outings that are advertised within Northwood. Um, that's a combination. Sometimes the PCW, like the personal care worker, will accompany the person to an appointment. Um, Often recreation events are done with recreation programmers and our family members and a number of things like that. Um, so it is circum it depends on the circumstance of what comes up. Um, but there's certainly, you know, we try to provide a range of activities so that people can be engaged and um, enjoy their lives. Have any of you besides Rose been to our facility downtown? Because I think it would be you've downtown been there. Or? Northwood. Northwood. Yeah. It's not yeah. So have you been there? No. On Goodwin Street, yeah? Yeah. 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 I yeah. was there. You were there? Brenda, before moved to okay. Bradford, lived there. Hmm. Well, it's, it's a very busy place. We have an oh, auditorium. Yeah. So there's many, many, many activities. It's almost like being on a cruise ship. I mean, there's things going and people coming and going. Uh, so there's lots of activities for the residents, for those that can, they're mobile enough to, to enjoy. Uh, my mother was in there for about nine years. That's that's why I'm part of this organization. Uh, they have something that I don't know if you're familiar with. It. She started off in something called the adult day. So as a as a family member, I was able to bring her in the morning at about eight o'clock, and she would spend the day there. And then I would pick her up in the evening, and I'd bring her home for. She would stay with us for the evening, but I would my wife and I were able to operate as a family because there's a, like a day program that you drop your family member off and they have all different activities and they're at, the, they're at the, the level where they can interact but they have difficulty on their own. And they're, she thinks she spent times with her, her girlfriends and she used to love going every day. And so there's that program. And then there's the, reaches a point where she couldn't be looked after by us and that we had to put her in care. So I saw some of the, the great work that they did. So I got involved at the board level, and you know we just built it into a, just a, an unbelievable organization. And uh, you know I, I I have no problem recommending employment opportunities there because I've been participating there for over 20 years in in many different uh, areas that that Rose can test it. That's one of the other things. Northwood has been a. Uh, um, a uh, great employer. We won for 2013 and 2014 Atlantic Canada's top, one of Atlantic Canada's top employers. And um, people stay with us for a long time. Uh, one of the things that really struck me when I first joined the organization six years ago was the number of people that said, I've been here 10, 20 15, 20, 30 years. I've given them 40 year awards yeah. for being part of our organization for, as Trevor's saying, 30 and 40 years working with us and loving it. So it's long-term employment. Yeah. yeah, great community to be a part of. And the, you know, the, the, the system here in Nova Scotia, the hospitals are getting more and more overcrowded and they need to send people out of the hospitals faster and faster. And our, as, as Trevor's indicating, our need right now is to get as many people from the hospitals into their homes so they can actually be looked after. And the government is asking us to find more and more people to be trained to go into the homes so they can actually be looked after in their homes and hopefully be longer before they actually have to arrive in the long-term care facility. So how much the program costs? It varies depending on the school and I can get you, you know, if we connect um, after I can get you an exact amount, but um, at the Center for Health Studies, which is a private school, I would estimate about 9,500 um, and then Hopefully, we'll have some tuition funds, some bursary funds to help you offset the cost of that tuition. Could I just interrupt? Along with that, uh, and Trevor will tell me if I'm uh, misstep here, once you start the course, there's a certain point in time, maybe Trevor can come in, where you can actually start to work for us, and we will actually start to employ you while you're doing the course. Hi, how are you? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a certain standard of when you complete uh, your first placement um, in a in a long-term care facility, then you can begin working part-time while you're studying. So it's not like you have nine months with no no income. If once you complete the first part of the course, uh, with the um, I guess there's a certain qualification, then we will actually be able to provide you with some employment while you're uh, completing the rest of the course. I don't know if that does that answer your question. And of course, at Nova Scotia Community College, because it is provincially funded, it costs a little bit less. Um, so it might be in the $7,000 range, possibly. Um, and that they have a course that begins every September. Any other questions? <laughs> For someone who... who wants to come without, before the course, like, or studying with the course to start working the first day. There is such a possibility, right? There Instead is. Instead of the dietary and some one and other things. And environmental services. And environmental. If anyone had an administrative like background, good with computers, good with phone systems and things like that, from time to time there are reception positions or admin assistant positions, a um, number of different things along those lines. What will the compensation be for, for those who are want to start um, on let the me same just, side I of the course to start brought an agreement. So if someone started as a dietary aide, um, they would start at 1531 hourly, and that's a probationary rate, and then go to 1557. Um, it is the same for a housekeeping position as well. And then if, if they complete the course, it goes up to 16 or 17.4, right? Yeah, if they work in home support, it would go up to 17.35, um, 17.95 after probation. Or in the long-term care facility, 16.38. Are you hiring people just for weekends working? We would. What position are you are you thinking of? Because uh, like I have a kid. I don't want to put her in a... Kindergarten because of the English language. Right, you know? right. Because I want to keep her close to my language. Right. You know? So I can look just in the weekend. There are some casual positions that are available, and you give your availability to staffing. Um, they do typically want a, a larger availability, just depending. Um, but we have had things like housekeeping positions that have come up that have been a point two, so you work every other weekend. Um, so from time to time, those come up as well. You want to be a nurse? Hmm? You want to be a nurse today? Um, I want to be a nurse every day. You are a nurse. I'm in, I'm nursing. Every, yeah. Um, it is like a shift. Like I just got in, so far. It's like a shift uh, walk. Is that like a? It should be easy to run as well, or just basically. We're very interested in full time. Full time. Yeah. But so, but you can do shift work as well. Okay. No, I mean, like, even if it's full time, it's like, like, do you have like night, evening, like morning, evening? And In a personal care worker line, for the most part, you would be. Um, the full time days are rare, so I won't promise that those are available. Um, but essentially, it's it's either an evening position, which is three to eleven, or a night position, which is seven to seven. Mm -hmm. They don't mix up days, evenings, and nights for the most part, unless you pick up additional shifts if you're a part time employee. If someone is a little bit um, uh, not so confident with his uh, ability to work there, want to start like just beginning to volunteer to try it or something, and, and then see if it suits him, her. Absolutely, we have a, um, a director of volunteer uh, <coughs> resources, I believe her, her title is, and um, I can put you in touch with with the your connection mom. to volunteer. Yeah, yeah. that's your mom. Yeah, very ec excellent person. Been with us for twenty years. Mm. Very, very sweet and very, very good. So the, uh, we currently have about 500 volunteers. Mm. It's not people who want to volunteer. They would like to volunteer, but not now. They, they, they need the job. They want to uh, test before just if, if the work itself is, is possible for them. The housekeeping, the dietary, uh -huh. the language. Well, we, the, we misunderstood the question. So they would like to volunteer for a certain time just to...
test it, is to test okay, it, to but see you're if actually it suits them, okay, if they can do it, if it's good for them. Okay, what well, that would be like job shadowing. And placement. Um, those can be arranged on a case-by-case -case basis. There's, um, it would certainly be the manager and the resources in their department and things like that. But um, we have done things like ISIS. Are you familiar with ISIS as an organization? Um, done work placements <clears throat> with them um, where they place someone and it's just an unpaid uh, three-week placement or something along those lines. It is a possibility. It's been done before. Any further questions? What's the, let me ask it to remember, the next step? Someone who wants to test it, one of the things, you, of the million things we said now, wanted to check it out. Yes, I, I would like to, to participate in one of the programs you offered. Oh, certainly. Um, I'll you address I can give my contact um, info. And uh, it's probably best to connect with me personally. And if there's extended interest in the community, we can do a larger, more formal session. Like we're, we're, um, we wanted well. to do this initial one today, as I said to you, so that we can get an introductory word out. And if, if everybody feels that we actually have something to offer and contribute, uh, we're prepared to, you know, Trevor and I would, would then arrange to do this again for a larger number of individuals who might be interested in hearing what we're talking about, um, you know. So I mean, there's there's there was that possibility, and today it was just the first step, so that we would have a uh, Trevor would at least have an introduction to the <coughs> type of and, and the caliber of the individuals that uh, that we're trying to roll this out for, and then we would try, you know, uh, part of his role would be to try to craft um, various scenarios that would give us the greatest opportunity to have the greatest success. So, you know, his, his, his part of his role is to find out what he can create that will be helpful to bring more and more people in because we, we have a need right now. Okay. So since we're, Trevor's not familiar with our community and not familiar with the needs of our community, uh, he wasn't sure exactly how to roll or, or what really to uh, uh, be able to recommend on you know, but if we had 20 or 30 people, you know, if there was yeah. a group in, in exactly the same position that we could actually roll something out for, you know, part of my job would be maybe, maybe to find a way for the board to be encouraging of Trevor to roll out a particular program, like an introductory program. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think in the case for the individual we're talking about here, I, I think that she would bring a, a, a lot to the, uh, the, uh, the initial meeting and may not need to be as hesitant as I think she is in, in just uh, getting in there and getting uh, introduced and allow it to roll out naturally. And I, I think she'll be very successful. Mm -hmm. I'm certain about that. And okay. do you want to give me your phone number? Sure. If someone um, immediately thinks she's. Absolutely, it's 421. Four. Do you have any business cards? 221. You have Mr. Barr. Bring him the door, I forgot them. <laughs> And then I'm in the cabinet. Can you give mine instead? 421 7297. 7297. My email is tham. That's why it won't be misspelled. Easiest. So you can write the number or the email, and or you can call me afterwards, and I'll give you the information. Uh, by the way, if, if anybody would like to meet with Trevor privately, just because you have some questions or some particular uh, thoughts that you'd like to, uh, that you didn't feel comfortable in, in asking, you know, Trevor will stay and uh, meet with you individually and, uh, and see how quickly that we can uh, be, try to use some help to you. Can you send the resume? Can you send the resume? Yes. 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 And when you send your resume, don't make it too personal, but let Trevor know that you are here today. Yeah. Okay, so there's a... I don't know if it's for... Because I'm not looking for a... I'm looking for another position. Maybe in a... Like a secretary or a reception? Yes. That's what I'm looking for. So, should I send a resume?
You could certainly send one. Um, I'd be happy to connect with you and, and see what's open. Those positions are harder to get, honestly. There is a, they're highly competitive. If we post for a secretary, um, an admin assistant, we'll get probably 200 resumes um, coming in. So they are, they are highly competitive, but don't be dissuaded by that. Or maybe this is the food for I'm looking for a part-time position. Yeah. Well, I think I, you know, dietary, you could get in very, very quickly, and then you get to know the organization, you generate some income, and apply in turn. And then, then you actually get to meet the people. And if you like them, you give them better meals, and they'll hire you. And if you don't like them, the first step is to commit to dietary, and everybody who's in charge of hiring for secretaries, you bring them special treats, good food. And then when, when there's a position, they'll hire you. I don't know if it's a uh, position. I know my parents are working in the same system. It is a okay. And they have entertainer inside the home care. So I, I'm kind of entertainer. I'm a clown also. Okay. And I'm looking for a position that I can uh, do something. Maybe with adult people, you know, to entertain them, to play games with them. Well, we have a it's recreational a, area, yeah. which is we have, we have a special department just for the recreational needs of our residents. Because okay. we're also trying to keep these people entertained and for it to be, um, if I say, not boring. Okay. But I don't know if we actually have, you know, Delicious. precisely, no, no, I don't know what we have now in that area. But again, once you, um, once you identify with Trevor, okay. if, if Trevor can get a bit of an idea, of the maybe a, something a little bit more comprehensive okay. than just what's on a resume, uh, as he learns things about you and as he learns what our needs are within the organization, uh, that could be helpful for both sides. Okay. So does anybody want Trevor to stay around?